One of those is called Wipe. That's a product that has been in the market for seven years. It was born as a web page, first of all. So we went all we went about this, but with first we found a magazine, then we went on to TV, and today, besides having sessions, this program we have an off-season program. That's a joint version of the same program. We have work, and we also produce digital strategies content for brands specialized on the generation of content specifically so that's a uh, broad strokes what we have done my name is andres vargas i'm a publicist i have worked my whole life in the entertainment industry a few years ago while i was at university i produced a comics magazine called Sap PPL. I was the first generation of a program that still exists on radio called Gadio and Radioactiva. There's a radio station that's where I came into contact with music and I slowly grew into this entertainment industry and a few years ago from 2005 I became a partner to a company that produces content for brands, trademarks write it and for Latin America we produce currently produce coca-cola radio it's called coca-cola FM we produce it from here Colombia Ecuador and Central America it's going to be available for in Peru Chile and Argentina and thanks to that relationship I have learned a lot about the management of music in the current world and especially everything pertaining to how the teenagers behave and that's our main focus teenagers on this coca-cola radio so i understand what they're looking for when they are browsing for internet and they're looking for entertainment so this goes beyond having music as a vehicle i'm also talking about the experience of socializing by means of these Hello. networks Oh, hello, my name is Uriel Baez, I'm also Mexican, I love to visit Colombia, I love to be here, I've been working for 15 years at a station for the American the station is also called by uh, Israel Priest. So that's a college radio, but it goes out to the whole city, Mexican city, in, and it's basically a professional radio station as Alejandro. I also, I'm not a musician, but I look for music. I talk about music. I recommend. I make recommendations related to music, so I also work in a production called Pan America. I don't know, maybe you have seen some of the stickers. Pan American is a program that we produce in Mexico City. Uh, we also send to different radio stations within the country. We also have this content spread out in Ecuador. Um, I believe you are in Colombia, you can hear this content through Radionica Sundays, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, so this program is obsessed about tracking all the content that is produced in Latin America and the United States, where they also hear us in Las Vegas, so we try to map out the music scene in Latin America, everything related to avant-garde music, rock, hip-hop electronic music, cumbia, and all these other variations that we may have music-wise between all the genres that we have, the European and English genres, and the way we consume and adapt these genres to our environment. So what we do is try to be up to date in terms of news, interviews, and some other content and that's what I do basically so that's 90.9 and Pan America 90.1 good morning my name is Jose Luis Galan I work 12 years with Sony Music in the marketing area for the Indian region and a year and a half I took the challenge of moving into Tigo that's a telecommunications company that I had a dream they wanted to take this music issue seriously so as you can imagine this is it hasn't been a very easy transition but Tigo that uh, project that they have and they believe in it and we are we're generating partnerships 
very powerful partnerships with different companies in order to take bring legal music into our country. So before we tackle or we bombard you with the questions from our panel, I would like you to tell uh, the people here present what content specifically are you using from the platforms that you use to work. What music content is Tigo is using specifically Panamerica? What content is Panamerica using? Well, and uh, sessions with Alejandro Franco, what content are you using specifically? In our case, we have content in all traditional mediums. In the magazine, I'm talking about printed media, we have sessions on work that's digital media. The website is different to the magazine, even though the magazine could be downloaded into an iPad. I mean, the iOS or Android environment, you could download our magazine there. You can also see some content on our web page. We also have content in, content in social media, it works 24-7. We have news available there, 24-7 international news, news related to concerts and the local scene. So in sessions, what we do every year, we have seasons that comprise 13 programs that are transmitted for the whole of Latin America on TV. We have been also in different territories like the United States. And when we finish the transmission and our rights are free after MTV, Network has done this or posted even our content in internet. We then post our programs into YouTube. We monitor them and they're always available at our webpage and our catalog that are sorted by alphabetical order. So we have over seven groups that have been recorded. We go from Great Barrett, including Cafe Tacuba as well as Chris Cornell. We have an impressive amount of content there. Then we have the two radio programs that I produce, even though I produce them for a radio phonics group that is related to Prisa and Televisa Radio, as many other radio groups here in Latin America. We use our content to disseminated in our own platforms and platforms. So when we interviewed Vampire Weekend for this season, we produced um, an interview that could be used in our work program that is also disseminated by means of entertainment and other television channels. We try to have this interview done on a face-to-face -face mode and we use it for the interview to we have a small section for different, for our different outlets. So what we do is produce content that we can use in different media and when we try to disseminate our content, what we try to do is produce exclusive content for every single one of our products. So that's basically what we try to do in terms of our content, on our content and the content that we also generate for other brands that has to be customized and then disseminated by the means they determine. So the strategies are basically the ones that determine the way this is disseminated. This time, digitally, basically, sessions. I want to talk about sessions right now. This, you can see this program through cable. Most of us have cable nowadays. What's the interest in the continent? When, you talk, when we talk about this program, when you see a band playing live and we have a band telling us about their own music, experience. What we have learned with sessions and with work too is that there is an interest, big interest in the region for musical products. Today, worldwide, Cindy Farrell, besides being a great musician, he is the front of a lot of He has told several times that we are facing a generation 
that she has named festival generation and I have a theory that's a little bit similar to what he has said. I believe that in Mexico this has already happened and it's happened in different parts of the world. Some of them are a little bit behind but the thing is that there is a collective interest above all amongst youngsters for music. Someone here in Colombia could be listening to the same record from the Vampire Weekend that someone in Tel Aviv could be listening to or someone in Spain could be listening to or someone in Chicago could be listening to or someone somewhere else in the world could be listening to they all share the same age, about the same age, the same social and economical status, the same profile. I have noticed that in the United States and Spain and some parts in Latin America, these are people who are going to university, people who are going into their first jobs, people who have the ability to go to festivals, local festivals, or would like to go to international festivals. And based on that, when we started this endeavor, we don't have an idea who are going to be consuming our products. So in Mexico, the rock scene, the people who used to go to the rock concerts are very different to the people who used to go before. So people who were trying to sell beer, for example, they couldn't sell more than two because the people who are going now to concerts are not allowed to drink beer legally, so the business has changed. Concerts are not used to sell beer, only you sell uh, uh, holy beverages to you sell also VIP places. All concerts need to have VIP seats. VIP seats are three or four times more expensive than a normal ticket. So for us, it has been a big effort trying to create a profile of the target that we're trying to aim at and we are trying to generate also attraction amongst all these people who are trying to consume music bands. This generates a lot of information for the different parts of the music industry to generate different activities. People tell me and I'm still surprised that the media are still saying that the music industry is in the middle of a crisis. Maybe it is a little bit, but we were trying to go through a transition period. So things change and they are ever changing in the industry. This happens in different industries after a certain amount, amount of time. But I think this has been a very important transition to generate new music content. And our audience is growing ever more. And I think that our, the emerging markets are very important for the music scene. Another question, and uh, this is directed to Andres. Uh, it's not MTV's fault, but MTV used to be one of the big reference points in terms of music that we used to have and we still have in the continent despite all the things that are being aired there now, realities and so operas. But when MTV stopped being a music channel and went into a reality producer and so opera producer, people switch off their TVs and in some way this reference point is dying. We are also talking about YouTube and the effect that it has created. But what steps have you taken so people who consume music turn their TVs on again to consume music? from the television. I don't know if we have accomplished that, but I know that people who love music, the people who really like it, people who appreciate music, people who use time to appreciate it, to learn about it, I am sure that they know about our products, they know about sessions at the very least. I have perceived that when I go to Chile, Argentina and Costa Rica, we just open warp there in Costa Rica and uh, we would like to have warp available in the whole region. It was a very strange thing. Someone approached me in Mexico 
and someone told me, hey, I want to open a yeah. in Costa Rica, and I thought about Costa Rica. I was thinking about Colombia, Chile, Argentina first, but someone approached me, and they wanted to have work in Costa Rica. They told me we just had a festival, a festival that we didn't even have in Mexico. It was a very high quality festival, so it looks like there is a niche and that it's growing. Well, more we have work right there. We have to do three different editions. We are going to have the Café Tacuba there introducing the magazine, but I'm telling you about this because I don't know how efficient we've been in terms of making that change possible. I don't know how many people in Latin America when they have seen sessions in Spain or Sunny Television or MTV, I don't know if they turn on their TVs to watch us. I don't know if they watch the whole episode, but I think this is a product that works because the content is of high quality. We try to curate the product the best we can, but on the other hand, I think what we have to do is produce a good product when work was open in Costa Rica, when it was launched in Costa Rica, uh, I feel that people want to consume the magazine, but I don't know how they consume it, I don't know how they read it, I don't know what they take back home out of it. So what we want to do is create first world television and we want our TV viewers to feel that that's the kind of product they're viewing. So I think this has to be applied in the whole industry. This is an industry that is growing. I think this industry has a lot of pretext, but I think this pretext has to be removed, has to be, have to be taken out of our way of producing. So we have to produce high quality TV. We have to use the highest quality when we produce it. We, we use cameras, for example, that are very high quality. We try to produce an artistic product and with very good finishes. So when I hear people talking about our product, that's what I hear. That's the way we have been able to stay on air for seven years. We have a big challenge. We're going to change networks. And at the end, what we try to do is produce a good content. We try to dignify a band on TV. I don't know how you do it here on, in Colombia, but that's the way we've done it in Mexico. So in Mexico, we used to have a uh, play, but we used to have a band on TV, and it was very sad to see. So if the bands used to change places. The singer used to play the drums, and they were trying to make fun of the TV station. So what we tried to do was that we tried to produce a good product. We tried to make it sound great. Well, I think you have produced a program for 10 years, and that's a radio program that has live bands on it, and they try to dignify the presence of the band, and I think that's the key. You need to produce very quality content. Some people like something different. Some people will like to hear the Misfits play. Some people don't know about the Misfits. Some people are looking for different content, for example, a different band. So what we try to do is offer broad array of bands. It is a radio station with a very clear focus. We don't think so much about targets, but audiences, and it is addressed to public with a uh, young spirit. There are a lot of people kind of around who are still looking to change music with the right to continue being happy. And what we play is what is uh, in passion among adolescents, whatever gender. We will try not to go into the very ethnic because we don't want to be uh, Obviously, we play a lot of Anglo pop. Also, a lot. Uh, there is uh, a wave now for electronic. Everything that used to be urban now is now more electronic. 
in two ways like Gibson, for example, are uh, doing a very good job saying I don't do uh, say some musical races uh, all night, but also songs because I invite someone to sing with a uh, lover and it, it becomes a hit uh, worldwide. It's easier because uh, a teenager likes to repeat the chorus. So that's what we focus on, all this musical style. We're not going to go to a uh, gender in particular. We're not just rock, uh, radio, just a very happy radio, very much in tune with Coca-Cola, which wants to give around joy. Like Alejandro said, quote, we want to dignify those artists that the rest of the world has uh, placed a, a finger on just because they say it's commercial. Because when someone starts to sell a lot, half the world starts to hate that person because uh, you know, she starts to make a lot of money. Why? When the music industry has so many problems to become commercialized and to be really a business. An artist arrives that starts to be successful in various countries and in his or her own country, oh, she sold himself out. And many of these artists have a problem that they can come from a very commercial type of build-up uh, because of the record company, and they do have to demonstrate that they that they do sing. And within this form of the Coca-Cola FM, we have an additional asset that is taught on stage. So it is a radio program that we do daily from 5 to 7 p.m. And then we do it on stage, it is a program. It is uh, done in a theater, like a late night show. There are, there's a, a big sofa. Uh, there are people sitting there and the band uh, in the middle of the interview is playing different songs. So a lot of artists have had that, like Superlitio, Dracula, Maluna, and recently we had Pasaporte. So we decided to be very interesting in that trying for artists that haven't had an opportunity to do a, a, a different version of their music may be able to do so. And that the result be a little more than what that team once uh, to go further and know the artist further than the songs. It is a platform that doesn't remain with just a playlist with music one after another, but because really a person between 15 and 25 really wants to know everything about their artists, um, how they, they compose their songs, why are there four people together, why, why all this song, why the letter of the song. So the composition, the uh, one era of uh, any composition of any band is focusing on this audience, people with a young spirit, and the um, musical mix, the programming, is very much oriented towards that music that complies with that small requirement, who's not very happy. And about that way that Coca-Cola FM is relating with local contents, but deep down, how is that relation with local contents? What is the project, the objective that you have traced yourself? The main objective of Coca-Cola FM is to maintain a uh, link with team to team, almost like being able to associate the dialogue between the social media that are speaking about a topic in particular, and we want it to, to come out from the same team so that it becomes a trend among themselves, and it becomes communicated, obviously, it becomes a kind of constant search, because that is what the teams are hearing. And we have found from new bands with a new YouTuber that has a program in the evening, 
uh, I think we were the first with the Gangnam style because one of these uh, guys brought it and said this is a phenomenon, uh, it's a virus in YouTube and we started to play it and three months afterward it became uh, worldwide hit. So the objective is to be always discovering, and that discovering means a clear relation with the local bands that we try to take to the other radio. And for example, there's a band in Argentina that became very strong, Cambionica, and through Coca-Cola FMA, it has started to disseminate to the others. And right now, we are trying to do the same with Pirañas here in Colombia. It started to play strongly uh, with a song that is more mainstream. They did it recently, and immediately we started programming it in Ecuador and Central America, so that the band might have uh, uh, an outlet to other countries. That's what we try to do, and that's the way we try to relate with local artists. The format about Plug on Stage here in Colombia, we do it only with local artists in Ecuador. If they do do it with uh, artists, uh, from uh, abroad because there is not so much of a local offer that tends to change because there's a new communication law that makes radio stations play for every uh, foreign one on a, a local artist that can be a headache for the radio programmer that doesn't know what to do but it, in four or five years maybe less I have faith that it's going to awaken the desire in people doing people in Ecuador and that that may be uh, more and more commercial and more in tune for what the public needs to consume. Talking about discovering in the uh, platform of Red Bull Pan America, uh, I think we are very much more uh, going after what is happening in the region. I feel that their bet is very much for those local colors where there is a mixture of quality and, a, uh, and a, 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 a very particular or own voice with the postings. There are music videos also, downloads, list of songs, a lot of Contents. What is the bet uh, actually for that uh, that is regional? What do you feel that has a uh, valued add, uh, added value apart from what I've just said? Well, I think the majority of media are more addressed to the uh, Anglo-Saxon culture. We call it in Mexico Malinchismo. Malinchi is uh, an Aztec woman that during the conquest, instead of playing for the Aztecs, uh, fell in love with Hernán Cortés, the conqueror. She was the translator and the spy. So since then we have a stigma, the Mexican, instead of supporting our own, uh, supports the foreigner so that he may conquer. And we, in the media, have become actors of this invasion we've become very open filters for the Anglo-Saxon to come in. That is not bad. There is great music in the Europe, the United Kingdom, the United States, other parts of the world. But at the same time, we are denying Latin America, Hispanic America. And as from a principle beginning from Africa United, like reggae, Bob Nar, the resistance, counterculture, alter globalism, apart from I having uh, the having the state for indie advanced music. I always was curious about our roots at the beginning world music from the social club or this other with Peter Gabriel, with the band, the like about music from the world, but more capitalized. And I have noticed suddenly that there's an area of opportunity in discovering our own music. Instead of looking to the northeast, we are looking to the center and to the south. And as Alejandro says, release South America, Latin America. It's a, a very important region to capitalize. We have to discover and dignify our own creation. We have to establish criteria to make it more competitive. It is back 
it is between amateur and professional, but we have to be the ones to be like a curators, a filters for it to be that the best comes through. Uh, I can be proud that in Pan America we have followed artists that are now flourished. Astro from his first single from 2009, 2010, Tyler Morrison, which was very a young child member that was good, Don Bafero, when they were doing their first mixtures of things with one of the planets. And in the 2014, we would like to also track those who are going to be the headliners in 2015, 2016. We don't want to say them. We are finding the new, the new students in Hispanic America because when we began Pan America five years ago, we said, the fact that Cuba, we love it, so all at the of Laos. But what is there after at the of Laos in Colombia, after Amigos in Visitas in Venezuela, Soda Stereo in Argentina, the three and the Spes and Prisioneros in Chile? We were left back in the 80s and 90s, at the MTV, the Latin MTV. So we are in this voracious uh, search to establish connections, something very important in our Pan America content. There is an over offer of music in Bantad, in SoundCloud, in iTunes, in Spotify, everywhere there's music. So I think that what the medium has to do is to establish a joint association, curatorship. We have a certain line of topic, sometimes topical, sometimes in daily, sometimes today, sometimes hip hop. And we try to establish these different um, uh, groups and to help the, the constellations. And when you look at the sky, the consumer is always telling you, hey, I want to know more about the different things you recommend something to me, but they don't know where to start, they don't know where to go. So what we do is try to join the dots, we show them the whole sky, the stars, we show them the information on the web, and we try to tell them, hey, if you go about, the, about it this way, you're going to find this. So in terms of contents, it has been a constant search to uh, generate narrative, uh, that word narrative and the human sense of music is very important to me, we live in an age where information is being fragmented, but everything is chosen as fragments, portions, parts, halfway stories, tweets, so the information that's available to us is reducing itself and our ability to tell stories is not very good. Some people tell me, hey, I like MGMT, and I ask them why, they tell me, because they're cool, they don't know who MGMT are, they don't know where from the US they are, from the UK or Australia, they don't know where they come from. So the idea is that we try to show them the context, what uh, the music is all about, where the music comes from, what's the relation between art, the video, the way they dress, the lyrics, the titles of the songs, the music structures. I like it very much. Uh, I'd like to have our web page. What we try to show them is criteria, the, pop, the, the audience. We want to give them criteria so they are very, they're better music listeners. We, as part of this panel, I think we come from this MTV culture. We like Rolling Stones, we like to read Enemy, we like to read all these kind of things. And we like to listen to the whole album. We think that has to be kept. That's something that we need to keep alive. So for Pan America, what we do is we get a video, some rocks. I hate them because they only show the video, they tell where, what artist is in the video and if you don't get any more information. People are always looking for multimedia and I think the text is about to be extinct so we, what we try to do is create funny paragraphs so people read what whatever the story it is that we're trying to convey. So in Pan America you have contacts from different regions, from all the regions, from Panama, Argentina, Mexico, Uruguay, content that obviously comes from Spain. And uh, there is Colombian content. I have two questions. 
what has ca caught your eye in terms of Colombian musical content and the second one is this is not a beauty pageant, this is not a competition, but what country do you believe has more advanced content? What country do you think is ahead of the curve or do you think everything is level? But in Pan America we look for the roots, we look for something that has a local characteristic to it, something that could be exported, something that could be understood in some other regions. We don't like generic stuff, we don't like things that are pure if someone plays rock because it's rock for members in the band and they try to sound Anglo-Saxon and even if they sing in English, we, we don't like it. We don't like him that much if they play house because it's a cold house, if they try to sound German or English, we don't like that. We like cultural coalitions, what we call bastard generation. That's uh, the coalition between the old world and the new world, people who try to sound German but take into account the local or regional sounds, so people who try to produce surf but an Amazonic surf, people who try to produce a ska but mixing it with cumbia, people who try to produce swing but with a Colombian touch, the swing that includes uh, music from the north part of uh, the Mexican territory. So that's why we're trying to look for a collision between cultures. So if we find something that is that peculiar, we are very Darwinian in that sense. We are always trying to look for a specific species. I mean, we find a small island and we find a music species that looks like something that already lives in Boston and it's done better there. We try to leave that aside. We're trying to look for those strange animals that we don't find anywhere else. And the other question, once it has caught our eye, oh, the countries that produce the, the best music or the most, this is not a beauty pageant actually, but it's very complex. I think that Chile, Chile is the best place even though it is a very small country, they have support from the government, they are very professional, they are like the Germans, they are very strict, they have very good communication agencies, they know how to work with the artists, and I think they have a, a very small number of musicians, but they create very professional music, they have good photographs, good names, a good feeling of the trends, and they know how to bring the local flavor in a Spain is doing very well. Spain has a very long tradition of independent music. Latin music in the United States, I think Brooklyn, Austin, California, they are going to be very big production centers of Latin music. They also have very good management agencies. And even though this is, they produce normal music, they know how to sell it. Argentina is, uh, level is going down. Now uh, they're trying to produce a lot of reggae and I think they went to sleep during the 2000s and now they're waking up again. You said that the record label, they are producing good music. Colombia and Mexico, they we are very alike. We have a lot of creation but we need to professionalize it. I think we have very good music, musicians, very good music. We are missing good management, good agencies to have something that is mildly relevant, make it highly relevant before we move into Jose Luis Galan. For those of you who just arrived, Jose Luis Galan, he works with entertainment part of Tigo. That we have the same question for you. So what's your challenge related to music content? Telecommunication companies, not a long time ago, they had some value-added editions where they discovered formats that people could use to personalize, customize their cell phones, no matter what their cell phones were. So, when we used to sell ringback tones on this side of the world, we are selling a lot of those ringtones, root tones, things like that. They're still being sold, but that we have 
better distribution opportunities which are related to what is commercially available. None of the bands that have been mentioned by the panel members here have been relevant in that kind of content sales. So what we decided was in this new stage, now that we have more smartphones and a network like Tigos that works, what could we do to add value to our offer and then what's the best way to introduce it? So our what we did correctly was uh, think that music adds uh, a lot of value, but how do we have music keep that value, add the value in our network? How can we offer more free services? But also talking about the data services, how can we have these? Uh, add value to what we do. So what we did was develop surfing packages that have a higher capacity and offer without any further cost a music service. And that's a, the big challenge. We need to get the different songs that we can make available to our users. So that's an invitation for all the independent bands, please digitalize your music. We have different mechanisms. There is not only one that you can use to generate partnerships. You don't need to have a written contract to distribute your music by means of cell phone companies, for example. So after that, we need to create our own, our own content. That's another challenge. We don't have to go into the record companies or have a contract with them. What we are trying to do is find the right partners, and we are trying to have this available to all of you, not only the mainstream songwriters or song producers. We want to have all other mu musicians present in our office. So we were talking about the future of music. Uh, someone five years ago predicted what was going to happen. The telecommunication companies, they are not only an economic muscle, very important one. They also have a distribution capability that some other record companies have lost. So music in physical format, they are having a big fight, they're having a very bad time trying to survive. So music, I think, has to be a public service, maybe as cheap as water. I think technology, they m things move forward very quickly. I think music has to be available to more people. And I think that next year we're going to have big progress related to this. But um, the light of this, I think music is going to have a very big value in our networks. and. I think that talking about discovery too, people are going to have quality access to this kind of content. Everything is going, everyone is going to win from the situation. Jose Luis has worked with record companies too. He worked with Sony Music for over 10 years. And I'm going to there say this. Some of us who are 40 years old or younger, we have a consumption habit, and what we consume is what I have in front of me in my computer or what I'm listening to in my portable music player. So next weekend, if you have the opportunity to go to any small town here in Colombia, you're going to see that they still have four or five music players in bars or places like this. And this is the way we are consuming music to youth boxes. So what we see in front of us, uh, that's what we think everyone is consuming. For example, here in Colombia, 45 million people consuming downloading music through their computers. I want to ask you about the consumption habits, the actual consum consumption habits here in Colombia. The way we see it from Tigo's standpoint, and uh, based on my experience in Sony, the physical format is no longer the way to go, not only because of pricing, issues but also distribution channels that's a very important aspect of the business on the other hand 
what I'm telling you about the consumption of products like Trutons. Most of us who use a smartphone today, but most telephones in Colombia are not smartphones. They don't have all the capabilities that we have in a smartphone. And they also have customization levels. That's something that has not gone down or been reduced, even though we have had some crises, some crisis around our country. Sometimes it grows depending on hits like Gangnam Style. Sales of that kind of product goes through the roof. Then, talking about other content, there is a difference between what is being played in radios and what people want to have access to. So I have talked about when you create your own playlists, you usually go back to music from the 80s and 90s, but all the time people are realizing that there are new things, they use discovery and they realize that things that are not played on the radio are available out there, so I think that this is going to be a very good business for brands that are now being successful. I think they're going to have the, their music catalog available to people and this is going to be a new opportunity to generate revenue and this is something that is being experienced more and more. We have over 25,000 users here in Colombia. I think that's a very good number, and I think that the consumption trends are changing, and, and you see every day how bands uh, get the benefits of this when they do their, when they do their homework. They are changing the outlook of music consumption. Before we move into the questions from the audience, I want to ask you, how are you, or your platforms, generating habits amongst the audience? And based on these new trends, I want to start with Alejandro. All these changes that we've had in the world that have been a little bit crazy. If I look at Warp, the first question that I come up with is, I think it's a little bit ironic. How I, what are you doing that something, the printed media, for example, what are you doing in order to generate this habit, reading habit or consum consumption habit amongst the audience? When we launched Warp online, that's the way we started. I immediately promised myself and my team that the experience was going to be very different to what a traditional media outlet was going to be. So I told them we're generating our own version of beach work. That's what I thought, that's the way I sold it. So the idea of launching a printed media outlet didn't sound right, so I came up with this idea with some people who were in the, in the editorial business. Uh, we talked about generating a partnership, and when we were very close to launching it, we were three months away from it. The magazine was going to be called Ecor. I told them, hey, we shouldn't call it that way. I just launched this w this work platform on the web. Why don't we call it that way? I will give you the license to use the name. I didn't understand anything related to rights. I started all my projects with uh, zero pesos and with a lot of will. So that's the way the magazine was satellite so the website is now the magazine's website and even though they have the same name the magazine the website and the TV program they have their own editorial team even though we share content as I told you before they are really standalone they are autonomous they are independent they have editorial independence even commercial independence. So now talking about what you're asking me about the magazine and all the other things to us, it was a very big discovery and it's still a big discovery. 
First of all, as they told us in the United States, and I think they're wrong, satellite radio is a big promise and it never happened. Online radio has an audience and a target, but this is n not the radio that we consume through uh, conventional radio, but at the end of the day, digital radio is a signal that you're going to be able to listen to every day. We're not going to be listening to local radio stations. We're going to be listening to global radio stations. So radio in the world is still a big business. And to me, in fact, I think that's the most natural media to share this kind of content. So talking about magazines, people said magazines are going to disappear. If they ever disappear, I think that the world is going to go into this ecological change. Today we take care of our animals. Today we have planet conscience awareness. There are some generations that are going to come after us and they are going to teach us about a lot of things that we have to take into account as human beings. So I think that if magazines ever disappear, it's going to be because governments are going to prohibit printing media but not because of consumption changes. We have proved that the new generations still like to buy magazines. Maybe the approach from an editorial standpoint is wrong, and that's the reason why so many magazines have disappeared. I think the reasons why they have disappeared are uh, the following first. From an editorial standpoint, they have not evolved, taken into account the uh, technological changes. They still have news sections. Why do they still have news sections in magazines? Because today, that's not feasible because we have information available to us 24-7. I think that things should change. You should produce different content in your magazine so people fall in love with it. And another thing, I think that spin in the United States, for example, they used to produce 250,000 copies. Rolling Stones in Mexico, they produce 60,000 copies. And all of the seven warp. In Warp's case, we realized that our niche was smaller and the number of copies printed needed to be different. So our niche is this size. We realized that it's not very big. And we print about 10 or 30,000 copies depending on our advertisement spots. And the bands that we're going to introduce in our issues. So, for example, in Mexico we have a big relation with Queens of the Stone Age. So we have a rule. We, based on the band, we decide what we're going to, the number of copies we're going to print. So we need to distribute our magazines the way they have to be distributed. And we are also constantly checking the market. We need to take into account our niche. In Costa Rica we print 30,000 copies. We give it away sometimes in Costa Rica it's not a monthly issue in Mexico we produce 10 issues in a year I think that the consumption habits independent from the fact if they are traditional media outlets or not in Mexico television is going to go into a crisis very shortly even though we still consume television in a conventional manner. We're going to start consuming this through Netflix, for example. I think that the important thing here is to understand, for us who produce content, we need to understand what the content needs to be, the way it has to be presented, and produce it in the sense that it has to be the niche today. More than an obstacle, I think it's an opportunity. Today, you could have produced something that is sold in a niche, Magazines used to produce 
100,000 copies in Mexico before. Today they have to produce 10,000 copies. And with those 10,000 copies, I get to the people I want to get. That's the success that the blog bloggers used to have. If you produce a blog today, you are a little bit late. But all those blogs that today exist, that's their success because there are agencies that sell those blogs, they sell advertisement there, and they're very precise. So what do you want 15-year-old girls who have a problem in their left eye? And we have that for you. We have this on a specialized venue for that, and that's your niche, and that's what you have to live with. I think that I don't think that there is going to be any medium that is going to disappear, actually, because there will always be hipster, the hipster that wants to have the CD uh, physical, or the, and it, it, that dream for those LP the reproducers are, are beautiful, but it's not the message it used to be. So they do tend to change, but they change audience. It's what we said at the beginning. We shouldn't be so much tied into being massive, but understanding the audiences and being able to surround these audiences with different media. In that way, I'm going to be more effective. A secret for a medium to disappear or not is if it remains in that story of the target trying to be massive, so the people who sustain it, the advertisers are going to see that it is not effective anymore. And I'm going to uh, mention a case. In, ne in Netflix, we can know exactly how many people saw what. That's why Netflix will bet on res arrested development, because the old seasons grew so much that they said, yes, I'm ready to pay for the next season. Something that networks had already destroyed, because they said it didn't have any rating, supposedly. It's knowing what the audiences are. And in the case of online radio, for uh, big advertisers, there is a reality. When I buy uh, publicity for the radio, I am submitting myself to two surveys, two weights a year, saying, what radio did you listen to yesterday? Instead, in a medium like Coca-Cola FM, I know exactly how many people are simultaneously connected, minute to minute. I know how many connected, how many were there for more than 30 seconds. That is why I consider an effective connection. So really, my 25,000 daily connections in Colombia, for example, I know they are a real audience, and that it is an audience I can work on to keep it connected one with the other. So what do I do for the audience to grow organically through content. If I have uh, content that is attractive for that audience, particularly relevant, relevant obviously the, the ice ball will grow thanks to the social media that live in the same system of internet where Coca-Cola and them is immersed. It happens to us. We have made discoveries that have been really incredible. The new dial of radio is not in a transistor radio, but in tune. There is where living together, there are the air radios and online radios. There we find that a radio that only plays mashups some place in the United States is head to head with the 40 main hits in Colombia. So, for example, more than 40% of the audience of Coca-Cola that comes from TV. So our audience is not in a computer, but in the smartphone. And with our audience against what we thought before, it, it does have an access to smartphones because whoever uh, will try to have the best smartphone, even if they don't have the internet, and when they find a, a Wi-Fi, they make a connection with Coca-Cola FM. So it's just discovering what audience this is to cultivate it little by little and make it relevant. That is why we don't see ourselves like an online radio 
structure, but rather like a platform surrounding the team and as we can do things to uh, get there with more contents, we will be more affected. One of the last developments we did for the AP iOS from Android and for the site from Coca-Cola FM was a play that we did for the listener in a real time to post videos, uh, surveys, we have real things. As for example, at the end of the hour, I can place this or this song, and people vote on this player, and whoever, whichever has more votes will be the song that is played. What happens with online radio? I think that it has an interesting background, it, since it's not commercial, at least Coca-Cola FM doesn't have uh, advertisement. It just... It's, it's just Coca-Cola behind. It's, it never says buy Coca-Cola now. So we have an idealization of our musical programming that is not linked to uh, the brand's objectives, uh, record industry, or anything obscure that was supposed uh, to be there in the radio for something, t for a song to be played. There's nothing, none of that. If the song falls within what we consider to be indicated for that audience, that complies with that of transmitting some joy, optimism, it, it will play. And obviously one of the main discussions at a certain point was, well, are we going to play a song from Luigi 21 Blogs uh, who, that says, like, real uh, garbage. If it's joyful and people, the target consumes it, why not? There were, those were risks to be taken, including the brand we have behind. Well, uh, about generating habits in the radio listeners and the people who follow us, it's a battle with different fronts. One, on one side we have our FM program, we send it to different radios. I think it's marvelous to have it syndicated and sounding in Las Vegas and Santiago de Chile or San Andres Isla at the same time. And we want to be listened to in Barcelona, New York, Peru. That is one front. Then we have the radio program, digital. Uh, we, ha we posted in the player of Play Music Academy Radio. You can do it through the app. And we, at the same time, we put it in Mixcloud. We have the various followers. As soon as we post it, it goes through 500 likes. And then uh, it, it will have more listeners, a thousand. It's not Gangnam style, but those are the different fronts we are feeding and that we have the Instagram, Facebook, so we have different discourses and we have languages for each one. We can see in our covers, we put them in Instagram and they have very little likes, even though they're very visual. We discovered that in Instagram we are more celebrated when we say but the Pan America staff uh, went to eat ceviche in a restaurant in the Mexico City and we have thousands of likes. Where did you go? So they care more about people than uh, Mercado, uh, market tech. So if we find a, a funny uh, vinyl cover, uh, or there's an eccentric character, and it, it will suddenly have many likes and comments. We find what people like in each front. The main front is the page, trying to find what kind of uh, discourse people like, very quick news, uh, interviews, whether they like questions and answers, like this long chat with Happy uh, uh, Mexican Institute of Sand, or a few short questions that are very friendly with the scroll. We see that these lists it work very well. It, it's the same like 25 bands you mustn't uh, miss. 10 new groups from Argentina or bizarre lists. Uh, five uh, Hispanic, Hispanic American groups that have redheads. 
uh, people need like this sub ensemble what other narrations do we do we try to tr we try to find new laws or bastardizations a new uh, video from Peter Languila or that might be the field of Pan America too because it is, makes us laugh at, at our own imperfection that brings a lot of visits so we have to see what functions everything that is for free people like to click on that the mixes of from DJs and my final question is the biggest enemy from products online are other products online they all have the same screen with your Gmail, your Twitter, because you are listening to your program online and suddenly you receive a tweet, oh, I want to recommend this video in YouTube, and then you click on that video and you stop listening to that program online. So you have to think about the program. Do you want it for an hour or small, three minutes or six seconds, like a, like a bit? Uh, so the formats, the longitude, the tolerance from listeners, listeners for long or short discourses in our case before generating consumer habits there's something that is key which is facilitating access so from our cellular uh, telephony is there are great investments the go does that for stamp smartphones to be cheaper from pins we speak about many the team and for many to have that possibility and then choosing what you from speaking about curatorship and uh, content first we have access then when we do have the access then obviously promoting contents in our case what we want to do is open a space for an opportunity to all first of all we have to culturize at, uh, at the music industry level to, to say that we have a legal music service here in Colombia right now we have to count on artists that have a, a major capacity to reach people but it's uh, an effort that it, everyone is going to be benefited from and for everyone to come in and see what they like so we have two very brief questions because is short. Right, first of all, thank you for being here with us. I am a fan of Alejandro. I didn't know about the Sambe Nere, but very good. My question is the following. You are creators of contents or are you capturers and uh, you make it massive. W we believe, I am a musician as well, and I work also with that, that our music uh, is the content, or that it is only the content. But I can see here that it, it's not like that. Uh, I want to ask you, how do you see the artist? How do you think we should have the attitude of being uh, editorial in, uh, with our attitudes, our life experiences should we be our own editorials or publishers and collaborate well uh, a group is a brand it has to be sexy it has to be able to tell many stories so that people would like to visualize them and people want to see them because it has this and this and that so you have to uh, put them in a capsule and sell them I think there are many examples in the international industry that if we pay attention we're going to see that there are only pretexts to continue speaking about the band and not because it's commonplace but to cite the, a very clear example is the uh, record from Graf Punk. You don't have to be Graf Punk to carry out a campaign like they did. Anyone can do it. Evidently, they had because of their name and, and having signed with Colombia uh, a contract like they did, a uh, capacity for that to become viral. But we do have to have pre pretext. Uh, Anna and the King. Uh, it started to work a lot, apart from the fact that she's very beautiful because she had pretext, a bit of this song, a bit of another. The LP is coming. It didn't come. Then more, then a single, and then after another, another single, and then 
the record is coming, no, and that's from, what's this? We signed with Colombia then? We make the image, uh, the two caskets made. Image becomes viral, then episodes, small capsules, contents that for us give us a lot to speak about. This group is coming like this viral. This contains on the structure, we know that at 9 o'clock on, the, on, the, on the September 9th, they're going to uh, launch their single or they're going to let us know something about their record. Uh, these are very mainstream examples, but they all begin like this. Fourier says it has to be seen as a brand and it, it has to give pretext like a little bit of meat. Not only music, what is clear is that music is the starting point, but through the many channels of distribution of more content, it's a responsibility of every band to generate the, the maximum content that is believable. I want to say something interesting. Here in Colombia, there are very good musicians. The Colombian musicians try to be very pure, having excellent sound to record with the best platform, the best producer, the best guy in the world. That's good. But what really makes a, a band, an artist, to go further and become known is not that the sound is spectacular. That's by default. That's quality control, that's an obligation, that's what you do. But the important thing is that the attitude from the artist himself is the one of a, of a star. That I really do have the capacity to impact when I go to a bar at night and everyone starts to stare at me even though if they don't know who I am. That's what, when you start to build a brand, to really have a brand that people acknowledge and that they consume even if they don't listen to the songs, but they really consume the, the artist and are desperate to know everything about him. The clearest example, we've had it in our face, which are the Leahy Galas, Madonna's, the Katy Perry's, that's what they are. We know all the first, the first time I knew about Lady Gaga was because Amana, that famous photograph that it seemed that you could see everything, something in her that seems to be like a, a penis. Uh, th those are the type of things that build a brand. Say a thing, so a few, uh, something in a few seconds. I, there's a tip I would like to say to, to extend your contents, stretch them, invest in what you have to do, make your music sound very well, make it a very good product in general. And then nowadays, it's very uh, worth it to stretch your contents. Don't just to bring out your record. No, go on, warm it up, uh, bring out some singles. Do it slowly. Have uh, one LFP, then the record, then stretch it out to six singles from ten. If you can, you invest a lot in that, and you have to make that give you a promotional right that makes you be played. I want to excuse myself from everyone who wanted to ask, but really we are very short of time and we would like to thank you for being here with us in this panel and obviously we want to uh, thank our national guests and of course our Mexican guests. We would like to see you again now. Thank you very much.